Welcome and thank you for to joining today's webinar, in, in intro, which provides an introduction to alt text and extended description in book publishing. I'm Brian O'Leary, Executive Director of the Book Industry Study Group. <clears throat> and we're lucky today to have Carolyn DeRossier of Scribely to kind of walk us through a primer on exactly what to think about when you think about alt text. Uh, Carolyn, you have uh, just about 30 minutes for us today and I know you've packed a lot of information in. so. With your permission, I'll turn it over to you to get us started. That's great. Thanks so much, Brian. I did pack a lot of information in today. So hopefully you have some coffee or some tea because this is a, a coffee or tea break um, and I'll get started. So um, I'm Carolyn Rosier, founder and CEO of Scribely. And I am very delighted to be speaking with all of you today about a topic I'm very, I'm very passionate about, which is alternative text or alt text for images. And my company Scribely specializes in content accessibility solutions. Um, and we are on a mission to make the web more inclusive, especially for people who use assistive technologies. Um, but before I get into that, uh, I wanted to actually share a bit more about my background because my accessibility career actually started in book publishing. Um, so before Scribely, I was part of the ebooks and channel sales team at Sage, uh, which is a publisher of college textbooks and professional resources for educators. educators. And my job uh, was to manage and distribute digital content and metadata to the on online retail marketplace. Uh, and I worked very closely with the college and institutional sales teams on their digital and inclusive access adoptions. And if I could trace it all back, um, this is really where my interest in solving accessibility problems really started. And because I learned um, very quickly that accessibility is not only a requirement for universities to adopt uh, digital course materials, it's also the difference between whether or not a student can access the information and resources they need to be successful in their educational pursuits. And this just felt uh, very important to me um, and I wanted to pursue it. So I started Scribely because um, I frankly wanted to be a part of the digital accessibility movement. I felt that was very exciting and um, focus my efforts exclusively on areas where I felt uh, solutions were lack lacking. Um, and what I found is that beyond the publishing industry, most digital images on the web have missing, inaccurate, or incomplete image descriptions. And that really makes visual content inaccessible to the millions of blind and visually impaired people in the world. And this just feels deeply exclusionary and like a problem we need to solve in the publishing industry once and for all. So part of doing this work on my end is getting involved uh, with associations that I feel are making positive change happen uh, in and around alt text. So since starting Scribely, I've joined and contributed to a few associations uh, that directly impact the future of alternative text on the web. The first is um, I'm a part of the W3C Silver Alt Text subgroup, and I work with a team to help define the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, or WCAG, for text alternatives uh, specifically. I'm also a member of the Digital Media Licensing Association, which includes a network of photographers, photo agencies, uh, digital asset management systems, all working together um, in and around images. I'm also a member of the International Press and Telecommunications Council, or IPTC, which is responsible for creating the international photo metadata standards that determine what type of information we can actually embed in image files. Um, and IPTC actually just voted to add accessible descriptions to photo metadata, um, which uh, could be a total game changer for publishing workflows. And I'll get into um, a little bit more about that later on. So what do we do all day, every day at Scribely? Um, basically, what we are is a team of writers that specialize in crafting exceptional alt text and extended descriptions. And our writers help content creators make their images and videos accessible to people using assistive technologies, um, such as screen readers, to navigate the web. And we do that by building a team of experts that understand exactly what it takes to write exceptional alt text. And our, our approach is first and foremost to 
hire writers that specialize in a specific subject area. And the reason we do that is because a STEM writer is very different than an art history uh, writer. And also the, the image description requirements for those images are, are quite different. Um, so we like to have um, subject area experts. We also require that all writers understand how to apply the most current text alternative requirements for WCAG and also uh, screen reader grammar rules um, so that alt text descriptions can actually be read in a way that's easy to understand for people. Um, but most of all, really, our writers uh, are just people who simply love to write. Uh, we hire people who are obsessed with language and choosing the right words to accurately communicate in an effective and enjoyable way. But aside from alt text writing, we also provide content accessibility services such as um, fixing alt, um, AI or existing alt text quality issues, uh, adapting alt text uh, that's been provided for ebooks for audiobook formats, and also conducting workflow audits to assist in smoothing some of the back office workflows uh, related to image description. Um, and then beyond images, we also provide audio description, closed caption, and transcription services for videos because that's another aspect of content accessibility solutions. So to understand why alt text is so important, you need to know a little bit more about the people who use it. According to the CDC, 26% of people identify as having a disability. That's one in four people who need us to prioritize not uh, accessibility, not as an afterthought, but actually from the very beginning of content creation. 4.6% of people identify as being blind or visually impaired, and people with visual disabilities represent the large majority of existing poten or potential screen reader users who would actually rely on or would benefit from being able to access a text alternative to images. But screen reader users are not just for um, blind and visually impaired people. 10.8% of people identify as having a cognitive disability. So I'm talking about um, people with dyslexia, epilepsy, ADHD, or screen and light sensitivity. Uh, they also benefit from having audio options. Also, it's just important to think about um, those people who experience temporary or situational impairments um, that make it difficult to read the content on a screen. So some of these scenarios might include uh, low light conditions, small screens, bad internet or phone service, or noisy or distracting environments that just make it difficult to, to understand information. Um, and people just prefer, um, many people just prefer audio formats, right? So. Um, we, we, you know, they might enjoy listening to audiobooks, or maybe they become accustomed to using voice assistants like Siri or Alexa. Bottom line is there are so many different people who can benefit from audio experiences and accessibility just provides options for people to choose the type of content um, that really works for them. So the focus of today's presentation is of course on images. Uh, so let's just dive right into the weeds and start here. What exactly is image description? Alt text is a brief textual description of the purpose and meaning of an image. And to define what I mean by brief description exactly, alt text should generally average around 125 characters and not go over 250 characters. Um, every image that holds some sort of purpose or meaning on the page needs alt text. And the only time you don't really need alt text is if an image is considered to be purely decorative. Um, and these techniques like sticking to character counts and identifying your decorative images are really important when it comes to alt text because screen reader users need to be able to quickly navigate the web and skip over any images that are not relevant to the content on the page. So in the case of the image on this slide, uh, we have a person seated on an orange rug in a modern indoor space, leaning against a white leather couch and typing on a laptop computer. And as for extended description, 
This is more of a detailed textual description that is only required when the alt text and the surrounding text does not sufficiently describe the image. Uh, and it's important to note here that an extended description is not simply a longer alt text description. It's actually used in conjunction with the alt text as kind of a continuation of the information. And both alt text and descriptions are, of course, read out loud by screen readers. Um, and some of these include JAWS and NVDA. Um, and these are essentially assistive technologies that enable people to listen to content read out loud as they navigate uh, websites and digital products. And if an Im image description is not provided, a screen reader will actually just skip right over an image on a page as if it doesn't even exist. Um, so this creates a, a severe visual barrier that forces people to use um, some sort of workaround or ask for help. And this ultimately holds back millions of people and creates inequities in our society that um, we simply cannot let stand in our digitally inclusive age. So some of you might be wondering, is alt text actually required? And I'll briefly touch on this. So alt text is a fundamental principle of the Web, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, WCAG, and this is the global accessibility standard that is recognized by courts when hearing and resolving digital accessibility lawsuits. Um, and that's because excluding people with disabilities is is considered to be discrimination against the Americans with Disabilities Act, the UK Equality Act of 2010, and the European Accessibility Act. Accessibility is a civil right as represented by the image on this slide, uh, which is a crowd of hundreds of people gathered in Washington, DC with the Capitol building in the distant background. And they're all holding up signs and turning their collective attention towards the same direction. According to UsableNet's annual report, digital accessibility lawsuits have actually inc increased 20 plus percentage points every year since 2017. And um, that's evidenced by the, the graph um, that's visible on this slide. And these numbers don't even include the number of accessibility demand letters sent out by law firms. So uh, the numbers are likely much higher for accessibility complaints. Missing alt text without fail almost always makes the top five most common accessibility errors referenced in lawsuits and demand letters. So not fixing your content accessibility issues not only creates barriers for your readers, but it also elevates your organization's risk of receiving a digital accessibility lawsuit. And the case of um, textbook publishers, it also simultaneously increases the risk of universities being sued for not providing equal access for their students. And that's because if digital course materials are not accessible, um, American universities are actually in violation of what's called Section 508 of the, of the Rehabilitation Act. So the legal risks are definitely there, um, but there's, of course, so much more to accessibility than that. Um, publishers really have an opportunity right now to be industry leaders for accessibility and finally break down these visual barriers that are blocking people from accessing information that in ultimately impacts their education, their careers, and their society. So I'd like to take a moment to really consider and dive into some of the opportunities for publishers. So first up, think about the next generation of readers who are actually at this point, uh, both digital and assistive technology natives. Uh, these people need content and technology that works. And I think we can expect zero patients for missing alt text and extended descriptions. So making uh, sure your content is accessible to everyone will actually capture more readers who expect to use the same digital products as everyone else. Also, people are reading a lot these days, but they're actually doing that in different ways, um, often switching between formats depending on the moment or the situation they find themselves in. 
I feel like the bottom line is reading should be easy, flexible, and enjoyable. And if you build out born accessible workflows right now, you'll actually be adding new features and benefits to your um, to your digital products that give people the option of switching between formats, which is really cool. Also, um, we kind of have an audio revolution happening right now. Um, so I'm talking about audiobooks, podcasts, voice assistants, um, text to speech technology. Um, they're all taking off right now. And that's because people enjoy being able to take a break from screens and actually listen to content for a change. Um, so think about this opportunity um, to adapt uh, alt text that you've added to your eBooks or are planning to add to your eBooks and, uh, and make that you know, more for the audiobook experience as well, um, rather than just skipping over the images in the script or directing people uh, to the sub supplementary material. They can actually experience the images in the moment as they're listening to the audiobook. And what you would be doing here is actually creating a single audio format that can be used by everyone. Next, uh, findability. Um, so alt text and extended descriptions also help search engines who, of course, cannot see images on the page. Um, so the image descriptions help search engines match uh, queries to search results, and that ultimately makes your content easier to find and ultimately easier, easier to buy. And finally, these same rules apply to searching your internal databases. Uh, so being able to quickly find what you're looking, looking for comes down to good metadata and cataloging practices at the end of, day, of the day. So paying close attention to your image metadata will actually help your organization become more efficient in locating the ever expanding number of visual assets added to your digital products. So what are some techniques you can use to actually add image descriptions to your digital content? Uh, and I want to briefly run through a few of the most common techniques, but if you do have any specific questions, please feel free to reach out to me after this presentation so I can point you in the right direction. Uh, but when it comes to websites, there really are two options, HTML and ARIA. So HTML or hypertext markup language is the standard language for displaying content in web browsers. And when it comes to images, alt text goes in what's called the alt attribute field for the IMG or image elements. And when a screen reader encounters this line of code, uh, it will actually announce that the object that it's encountered is an image and then read the alt text description out loud for the user. And if you have um, maybe a group of images or images with captions, you might consider using figure and fig caption um, in HTML code to identify the various parts of the image. So for instance, you can identify uh, the visible caption on the page as related to the image, uh, which is pretty cool. Also the alt attribute um, is contained within these figure tags. So this is a great way to organize and present your images for the screen reader experience. And when it comes to HTML uh, for extended descriptions at this point, um, you can just use simple hyperlinks to an extended description either contained on the same page or um, in an external location. Uh, an alternative option to this might be to actually make the uh, extended description part of the web page itself and allow all users to expand and read more about the image. And if it's not possible to use HTML, there are options with ARIA as well. Um, so you can explore using the figure role, ARIA labeled by, um, and also ARIA described by for alt text and extended descriptions. When it comes to PDFs, things can honestly get a bit tricky, um, but basically what you need to do is tag all of your images as figures and then set what Adobe calls uh, the alternate text. Um, so the image on this slide includes a screenshot of what this action actually looks like in Adobe. Um, and what we see here is a transparent image of a VW bus and a window 
um, overlaid on top of that that reads set alternate text um, and the description populated in the alt text field reads orange and white vintage Volkswagen bus drives down a high desert road, blue skies and clay colored sandstone rock ahead. So that's an example of how you would populate alt text um, in this field. Uh, but this can really be uh, kind of time consuming after the PDF has been uh, created. So if possible, my best recommendation is to actually um, make alt text part of your InDesign process. Um, so taking it a, a step back. And um, there are some really helpful uh, guidelines from Adobe about how to do that. Or better yet, um, take it back even further to the manuscript stage and start adding your alt text in word processing programs like Microsoft and uh, Word and Google Docs. Um, and when it comes to adding uh, extended descriptions to a PDF, this can be done in a few ways, but honestly, there isn't really a proper place for extended descriptions like you see on this slide um, for alternate text. But one uh, method is to add a visible hyperlink to um, an extended description, again, either in another location in the document or, um, you know, for instance, at the end of the document or at the end of a chapter. Um, so that's one option. But another is to make use of what's called the title uh, field and the alt text properties, and that can be found in the content panel. Um, and this is a good approach, approach if you um, absolutely need to keep those extended descriptions separate and hidden in the document. So now I wanna um, circle back and talk more about um, what's happening with IPTC and this photo metadata update. Uh, so as we all know, workflows are absolutely critical to creating born accessible content. And this is an exciting time because we finally have a new approach for managing alt text and extended descriptions in a more efficient way. So IPTC voted in October to add two new properties to the IPTC photo metadata standard. And those are called IPTC alt text accessibility and extended description accessibility. And this, um, what these fields basically mean is that content creators now have the option of embedding accessible descriptions into the image files, essentially hardwiring alt text and extended descriptions so they travel wherever the image goes on the web or through internal systems. Um, and some of you may have heard of ITTC um, for their description caption field, but, um, that field um, for description caption is actually quite different um, than these two new fields. Description caption covers more of the who, what, when, where, why of an image or the facts of an image. Um, so these are, are slightly different um, and not directly related to accessibility. Alt text and extended description are actually meant to be a text alternative or replacement for the image. Um, so hence the need for, for two new fields. Um, and right now, um, IPTC are working on gaining support with um, both digital asset management providers and also publishing software providers. Um, and you can actually help this along um, by asking your providers to support IPTC metadata to help with making your accessibility workflows more efficient. Um, so on this slide, we have a, a view of an open laptop computer displaying a grid of images in a database. And um, I put this there because I want you all to imagine these images in your system actually organized and described with alt text that meets the quality of your content. Um, so I know some of you might be wondering at this point, how would the potential widespread support of IPTC metadata actually impact publishers specifically? And um, this would essentially mean that you would be able to access alt text written by the original providers you licensed from, which would ultimately save time and money um, by adapting rather than creating alt text from scratch. You can also use a DAM software that supports IPTC metadata to track and manage um, multiple versions of alt text for specific contexts. Um, pulling available alt text into the system with an import and then writing alt text back to your images from the system on an export. And finally, you can store your accessible descriptions in a centralized location that has the potential to feed your entire eco ecosystem of digital content from your website uh, to your social media and your digital products. 
Um, so we finally have a way uh, to scale human generated descriptions. So this is really exciting. Um, and also I wanna give a plug for Bill Kasdorf's recent Publishers Weekly article about this. Um, and I think <clears throat> Brian is going to drop uh, uh, the link in the chat, but it's called How Publishers Can Get Alt Text Right. And um, you can check that out uh, to learn more about IPTC's accessibility fields. So regardless of um, workflows, it really all comes down to, in my opinion, starting the work as early on as possible. And on this slide, we have a person wearing headphones, seated on a couch, smiling and leaning their head back against their hands, gazing away from their open laptop computer in front of them. And I chose this image because it reminds me of listening to delightful audio content. And that's exactly what we're going for by including image descriptions. So simply put, I think this work belongs in editorial and uh, should be completed when images are either created or acquired by a publisher. Uh, and that's because image descriptions are really part of content development. And for some of your reason, uh, your readers, this is the only way they can access the visual details on the page. Uh, so you want your descriptions to positively uh, reflect your brand and your high quality standards. Next, um, my recommendation is to encourage your alt text vendors and authors to actually work together. Um, either the author editor writes the alt text and the alt text vendor edits or vice versa. Uh, I think this type of collaboration will just further improve the quality of alt text and create a great experience for your readers. And also it's important to um, develop a process for tracking images that don't have electronic rights at transmittal. This was a common uh, issue I encountered in my past life at Sage um, and can be a real sticking point, but I believe it's important for this work to remain with editors, authors, and alt text vendors rather than passing it further along um, to others who may not be as focused on developing the book content. So main takeaway for today, is move beyond compliance. And if you haven't taken action on image descriptions yet, maybe make that a resolution for 2021. I think that you'll ultimately find that there are tremendous benefits for doing this, this work. Um, you'll, for instance, create better content experiences for your customers who use assistive technologies. You'll also achieve a major accessibility milestone that is truly something to be proud of and something that you can announce. You'll also be taking action on diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, promises for your organization because accessibility is a part of that. And you'll be uh, keeping pace with um, the growing popularity of audio formats, both using image descriptions um, in text-to-speech uh, features in e-reader platforms and also enhancing the audiobook listening experience. And lastly, um, your organization can be a leader and advocate for social good. Um, making content accessible is not only the right thing to do, it's also what we always should have done um, from the beginning of digital. And Brian, how are we doing on time actually? I'm just, I'm just looking down at the clock. Um, we're, we've got a few minutes left and we certainly have several questions. So uh, okay. if you wanna wrap up, uh, we'll do yeah. that and then, and then field some questions. Sure, I'll, I'll quickly move through the last few slides. Um, so if you want to see some image descriptions, uh, samples, definitely follow us on Instagram um, at Scribely Tribe. We have samples there. Um, we also do um, what's called uh, Scribely Shorts um, on LinkedIn. So follow uh, the company page on LinkedIn. Um, also, I'll just skip over this, but I, I'm a co-host of a podcast called Say My Meme. And if you love memes and you want them to be accessible, um, definitely tune in because it's a lot of fun and it's all about making um, the visual internet culture accessible. And then um, there's my contact information there. Feel free to reach out to me, Carolyn, spelled C-A-R-O-L-I-N-E at scribelytribe.com um, or visit our website, scribelytribe.com. So I think we can uh, conclude it there and get to some questions at this point. Thank you, Carolyn. I might suggest just leave up the uh, prior slides so that folks who might want to write down um, your email address have a little bit more time with it. Um, so the, the, we have several questions that are kind of specific in nature. So I think you'll be able to dig in. Ainsley asked uh, in the middle of the presentation, uh, best practices for describing graphs for alt text. I mean, do you describe pertinent bits and provide a description for all data points? In the long description, how do you kind of figure that out? 
I actually love describing graphs. They're one of my favorite types of image descriptions um, because there is a, a method to that. Um, but short answer is um, uh, my recommendation is start from the more broader details or the most general details and then get to the more specific data points. Um, so describing the, the, the graph in general, maybe describing the scale or the intervals um, you know, generally what the, the trends are and then getting closer and closer towards those data points. I think that that kind of um, gives uh, screen reader users uh, the experience of gradually being able to visualize that graph coming into view. And Kathy asked, uh, and I think you mentioned a character count, uh, but what are, what are you recommending for character counts for alt text? She indicates that they're running into different limits using various programs, including Twitter, in constant contact. Um, so how do you reconcile those things? Yeah, there, there is a lot of variation, to be honest, in terms of character limit recommendations. And something I'm trying to do as part of the W3C um, alt text subgroup is actually get the W3C to define a character limit uh, once and for all, because technically it's not. Um, and that information is determined by social media platforms or, or others that are recommending it. But um, my personal recommendation until we have an official answer is 125 character average, um, but not to um, ever exceed 250 characters for alt text, because at that point, we should really be providing an extended description. Thanks. Um, Eileen asks, uh, and this is an interesting thing given some of your examples, given that alt text mostly serves those with visual disabilities, are color descriptions necessary? Um, can you repeat the last part of the question? I don't think I heard that you cut out. Sure. It's so she's, Eileen is asking uh, to what extent are color descriptions necessary? There are some instances in which you talked about the, the descriptions you provided refer to the color of the ground or the sky. Oh, okay. All right. That's an interesting detail. Um, so if you have um, space within your character limitation, um, I think that uh, color is, of course, uh, important to describe. Um, but if it's a, if there are other more relevant visual details, um, you know, you might want to focus your efforts there rather than describing color. Um, in the examples I provided, um, I felt I had a little space uh, to to get more into the into the visual details in that sense. Great, thank you. Uh, Kristen asks, um, do you recommend describing people? In alt text, for example, providing characteristics like age, race, or gender, uh, or just saying person? Or is that, again, context sensitive? I think it's, again, context sensitive. Um, if that's important uh, to um, the purpose or meaning of that image, I do think it's important to describe. Um, we're kind of getting into an interesting territory with inclusive language, and there's a lot to that. Uh, Scribely actually has a blog article specifically on inclusive language. Um, so I think we need to make um, better, more intentional decisions when it comes specifically to identifying and describing people in, in photos. Um, that's it. Also say that, you know, IPTC, I think can be the, the embedded metadata can be helpful there because we may actually get that information from the original um, image provider or the photographer, which would be helpful for all, alt text vendors to have down the road. And in a related way, uh, Kathy asks, what if IPTC photo uh, accessibility text that comes from the originator doesn't meet the publisher's needs? Can you edit it for uh, some purpose? Yes, absolutely. So you can edit um, the original alt text and uh, then embed your alt text in the images if that's supported by DAM for providers. Um, and you can also add... Um, uh, your uh, organization's name to what's called the description writer field. So you can actually track um, which descriptions were written by you and which descriptions were written by the original provider. Great, thanks. Chris is asking, uh, what options are there for extended descriptions in ebook files as opposed to the open web? And I, I think you, the article that you referenced from Bill Kasdorf touches upon that as well. Yeah, I think uh, definitely check out um, Bill Kasdorf's article. There have been various approaches over the years. Um, one, you know, in the past that I think we've moved on from at this point, uh, but maybe is still in use is the use of the long desk attribute. Um, uh, and that, you know, we were using that for extended descriptions within eBooks um, and web pages, but um, there are other approaches that are being developed now that may provide a better experience um, for extended descriptions. 
Um, and then finally, Bob is asking um, on an e-commerce platform and on a product page, how would you suggest handling product images? When you have a gallery of images for the product, I think you have an example that you used in your presentation where there was a collection of images. And, and then the follow on is what about when we show internal pages of a book? Yeah, um, that's such a great question. Um, when we have sequences of product images um, and we know that, and that's the context of the for the alt text, um, Scribely actually doesn't uh, repeat any visual uh, information that's already provided. Instead, we focus on what that specific product angle or view is showing, and we're focusing on that detail. Uh, so at the end of the five or 10 product images, um, hopefully uh, users have a, co a complete view of the product, a 360 view um, and a sense of that. Um, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the second part of the question. The question, if you were showing pages, pages from a book. Right. Okay. So um, that can be a little challenging um, with all the, the text on the page, um, especially for quick navigation, you know, that I know people want to do when uh, they're navigating product images. So I'd say provide the most high level details um, of what that page shows, for instance, you know, maybe you selected it because it shows um, several graphs or it shows uh, lots of imagery. Um, and that's something that they can expect if they purchase that product. What you think about the intention of why you shared that page in the first place. So again, going in both cases, go back to the context that you want to convey and make sure that you, you write something that says that. Yes. Well, we've kept you a few minutes longer than a coffee break, but everybody loves a longer break. Uh, thank you very much for preparing this for us today and for walking us through how to uh, both think about and, and execute effectively uh, when it comes to alt text for books. Uh, we look forward to having you back another time and also to seeing you as a member of our workflow committee in the future. Absolutely. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks. Take care.